It's our first race back in Australia since it's come off down, so we're looking for a good hit out this weekend. I think the race will be a lot harder than last year because there's a better quality field. The plus is three days instead of two this year. It's going to be, it's going to be really fast. It's four stages in one day. I've been mean, looking forward to the time trial. I'm not really looking forward to Bluff Knoll. Oh, I'm not really looking forward to the hill, the Bluff Knoll. Apart from Bluff Knoll. Yeah, I think it was pretty nasty. Three days of hills and heavy legs lie ahead, but for 46 cyclists, the challenge is too good to pass up. 518 kilometres through Western Australia's Great Southern, including a climb to Bluff Knoll in the Stirling Ranges. The 1994 Classic began with five laps of Cojanup, then the riders headed to Broome Hill and on to Katanning, 62 kilometres east. The Great Southern to the south and east of Perth produces wheat and sheep and welcomes tourists to its wildflowers and national parks. The riders will return to coaching up three days and eight stages later after visits to Broom Hill, to Tanning, Tambalup, Kalangarup, Bluff Knoll and Cranbrook. Pink Vogel, at 21, is now one of the world's top road riders. He has a Commonwealth Games gold medal and last year won the Tour of Holland. Also with the AIS is Matthew White from New South Wales, who finished fourth in last year's Classic and is best known for his team time trialling and team pursuiting on the track. White finished seventh in the Commonwealth Games road race. After two years riding in Belgium, Victorian Darren Gowdy is back in Australia and has turned professional. Gowdy intends to race in Europe again next year. Chris Brown has recently joined the Australian road squad and has finished in the top 10 overall in the Exceed National Series, of which this tourer is now part. Chris won the inaugural Great Southern Classic last year. Gavin Parsonage has made a rapid rise to become WA's most successful local professional. He's a powerful sprinter, but has twice been runner-up in the Australian Pro Road title. Brett Dennis is one of Australia's top time trialists. Also won gold at the Commonwealth Games, after recovering from a hip dislocated on the Tour de Pont in the United States. Daniel Trini has been the most outstanding rider in WA this year, winning the majority of junior road and track medals, as well as the open 100km title. Stage one of the 1994 Classic was 62 kilometres from Cogin up to Katanning via Broom Hill. Many of the 46 starters weren't expecting too much early action in the first stage of the tour, but as the pack headed for Broom Hill, some of the favourites, such as Daniel Trini, signalled their intention to claim a share of the $18,000 prize money including $3,000 each for the top individual and top team. Then we saw the first casualty. Eddie Holland's tour chances ended on this early stage when a puncture forced him to the side of the road. He signalled for a new wheel, but the change was delayed, and by the time the WA Pursuit champ was back on the road, the leaders were well on their way to Katanning. The pace was fast, and three packs had formed nearing the first intermediate sprint. It was Hank Vogels who took the first prize money of the tour. By Broom Hill, the gap for the chase group was 1 minute 27, as Vogels, Trini and Davis led the breakaway group through the town. As they turned for Gatanning 20 kilometres north, the wind was gusty and no longer behind them. From here on in, they had to contend with a crosswind. It was Matthew White from New South Wales crossing first to beat WA's Gavin Parsonage. Two of favourite Henk Vogels came in third. The official time was 1 hour 40 minutes and 48 seconds. The race leader's yellow jersey was awarded to Matthew White after the first stage of the 1994 Classic. Stage two was a criterium. 45 minutes plus two laps of a Catanning Street circuit.
Daniel Trini, an early casualty with a puncher, was allowed to rejoin the race after changing a wheel. The Preems gave the riders a chance to earn some extra prize money, and Brett Dennis won his share. After 45 minutes, the pressure was on for two final laps. And Matthew Pointer hit the line first, followed by Hank Vogels and Matthew White. The official time for the criterium was 48.06, and Matthew White's third placing was enough for him to retain the yellow jersey. The 20 kilometres back to Broom Hill was a time trial, and traditionally one of the most important stages of any tour. The riders left at one minute intervals in reverse order to their overall standings. It was a testing stage into the wind, and the early riders struggled to stay in touch on general classification. The accumulated time, which will decide the overall placings at the end of three days. Chris Brown, defending his title and one of the better time trialists, missed the start by one minute 40. An error which all but ruled out his chances of repeating last year's tour win. Vogels rode the 20 kilometres in 26 minutes 43 seconds and won the stage three time trial. Darren Gowdy was 64 seconds behind and British rider Hilton McMurdo was third. Matthew White was unable to match Vogel's world-class time trial ability and relinquished the yellow jersey to the champion WA rider. Stage four was 67 kilometres south from Broom Hill to Tambalup and then east into Noangarup. The riders were given an enthusiastic farewell, but some were uncertain of the level of stamina required to cope with four stages in one day. Vogel's Mayo Jeune led the pack early, but fellow West Australian Shannon Syme broke and opened up a big lead. Syme rode strongly into a solid breeze to keep in front almost into Tambala. The pace quickened through the town, and with 43 kilometres to go, several riders made their move. Matthew White overtook the leaders, no doubt wanting front position with the intermediate sprint not far ahead. But the Sydney rider found Gavin Parsonage sprinting strongly at the line and the local pro took the money. Close to Noangarup, Henk Vogel's yellow jersey was at the head, along with Chris Allen and Gavin Parsonage. It was Allen who found the strength to steal the lead into the town and over the line. Gavin Parsonage came in second, and Matt White took third ahead of Vogel's. Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, after the time trial, I thought it was going to suffer real well. <laughs> yeah. um, so the legs came good all the way through. Yeah. Feeling more confident about a tough day tomorrow? No, no, I think I'm going to be pretty sore tomorrow. Oh, the legs are sore, obviously. I mean, four stages in one day is... is uh, I've never done it before, but oh, I found out today what it's like. But, um, yeah, hopefully we can go out, come up good tomorrow and get, give myself a bit of a massage tonight and we'll be right. Chris Allen is a West Australian who's been riding for Queensland. The official time for stage four was one hour, 35 minutes and 48 seconds. Day one gave Hank Bogles the start he'd hoped for, and he led the general classification from McMurdo, Parsonage and White. His consistency over the first four stages earned him the right to retain the yellow jersey overnight.
day two of the 1994 Classic was grey with gusty winds. But the weather was not the talking point, as the riders prepared to go boldly where no peloton had gone before. 77 kilometres to a punishing hill climb a bluff knoll in the Stirling Ranges. I'll catch you later. From Noangarup, the course would take the riders south through Borden with intermediate sprints at 32 and 55 kilometres. Five laps of the town warmed the riders up before heading out to the open road. Eight kilometres from the start, the pack allowed Chris Brown and his 18-year-old brother Tim to roll off the front. Most riders preferred to keep something in reserve for the gruelling finish, and the brothers from Perth set out to establish a big lead. As the Browns powered ahead, the rest of the pack also faced the discouraging sight of the Stirlings looming ahead in the grey sky. Chris Brown beat his brother over the line in the intermediate sprint and 25 kilometres into the stage, they led by over two minutes. The rear pack were hoping the leaders would tire, but instead the brothers powered through Borden and onto the Stirling foothills. With no challenges in sight, the second sprint was also a gimme to Chris Brown with his brother second. The pack fully expected to overhaul the leaders, but the going got tough when they turned into the Bluff Knoll Road. The steep climb made making up the leeway very hard indeed, and the higher they climbed, the tougher it got. It was a tired Chris Brown who reached the Bluff Knoll finish line first, an official two bike lengths ahead of his brother. He just rolled off the front and got a bit of a gap and, and I thought, oh yeah, we'll try this out and <laughs> pay it off. Well, I saw Hank go to the front just before that with Matt and a few others and they decided hammering and knew you had to be there or someone would have gone off the front. The brothers had led by up to five minutes at one stage, but this was reduced to one minute 17 when Matthew White stormed up the winding ascent to come in third ahead of Hank Bagels and Gavin Parsonage. It was a tortuous end to a 78 kilometre race and only 32 riders remained at the halfway point of the tour. Terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> we knew Brownie was um, two, minutes, two minutes 30 at the bottom of the climb or something like that. Yeah. And it ended up being 140. He must have ridden really well to stay out there all day. It's a big ride. There's a lot of guys now that are out of contention that were in contention this morning. Um, but there's still 250 k's of racing in there, so it's not going to be a walk over for me. The stage win was important for the 22-year-old Chris Brown, who moved to fifth on the general classification, a good result after his mishap in the time trial the previous day. Hank Vogels had done enough over the final climb to retain his yellow jersey. Having reached the top, and after the presentation and a lengthy meal break, it was time to come all the way down again. Stage six began under suspension until the worst of the hills were passed. But the riders had decided not to hurry the 74 kilometres back to Nwangarup. They were happy to help each other through the strong crosswinds and happy to leave the Stirling Ranges behind.
first attack came from Matthew White. He struck out to take the intermediate sprint and increase his chances of taking home the Sprint King's jersey. And then the rain came again. This was the most miserable stage of the tour, with the wind, rain and cold working against tired legs as they pushed to the finish line, still 50 kilometres away. By the halfway mark, the weather had cleared. White also took the second sprint, and perhaps hoping to pounce while the New South Welshman rested his legs, a break came, ominously led by Gavin Parsonage, Chris Allen and Henk Vogels. Parsonage and Vogels made a bid for victory with 10 kilometres to go, but were pulled back by White and Trini. Parsonage countered with a winning solo effort into Noangara, narrowly holding on from Vogels, Trini and White. The WA long distance champion then revealed how he tried to keep warm in the bitter cold. Yeah, it was pretty cold there for a while. <laughs> the papers. Oh, the newspaper under the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did it do any good? Yeah, it kept me warm. Oh, the hard day. It was, it was only a short stage, but it was, all day was in the crosswinds. We had atrocious weather out in the road with the rain. And yeah, there was only small groups coming in all day, so it had to do a hell of a lot of work this afternoon. And after such a hard con this morning, a lot of guys felt it. No one was able to really hide in that crosswind, were they? No, not at all. That's why this tour is so hard, because there's nowhere to hide in the tour, you know. It's very exposed roads and undulating area, so uh, nowhere to hide, is there? I ran out of legs at the finish there, I think. <laughs> so uh, it's a long day, but another day, there's another day tomorrow, and, you know, I haven't won a road stage yet, so that's just another, another thing I'm... I'm looking forward to. Gavin Parsonage had won his first stage of the 1994 Classic in the official time of one hour, 56 minutes and 44 seconds. But Henk Vogels still led the general classification. Hilton McMurdo had been forced to withdraw with an infection and Matthew White now held second place ahead of Parsonage and Trini. At the start of the third and final day, the remaining 30 riders prepared for stage seven between two of the most historic towns in the Great Southern, Tambalup and Cranbrook. The rain had gone, but the morning was cold. Henk Vogels, the world's number two amateur, had led for the last four stages, and the obvious favourite to take the tour and the $3,000 first prize. Matthew White had proved himself a quality sprinter, but was one minute 14 behind Vogels, and would have a tough fight to take the yellow jersey back to Sydney. Gavin Parsonage was third, his strong stage five left him 142 from the lead, but still capable of splitting the field. Outstanding local junior Daniel Trini was some distance back on 218, with Chris Allen at 443 and Chris Brown on 446, both with a lot of work ahead or needing a lot of good fortune for them to take out the tour with only two stages and 165 kilometres to go. The riders were in no hurry over 10 laps of the Tambalup circuit. But as they headed south on the open road, it was former Australian representative Matthew Pointer who led a three-man breakaway. Victorian professional Darren Gowdy was close behind. Gowdy soon bridged the gap with Pointer, Harris and Lack, and being seventh on the general classification and having the most to gain, drove the breakaway group onto the intermediate sprint at 31 kilometres. Gowdy's six-second bonus was enough to move him into sixth place ahead of Brett Dennis. The chasing pack picked up the pace and closed on the leaders. But with 10 kilometres to go, it seemed the winner was to come from the lead group. In the sprint of the line, it was Pointer who led the way to become the first rider to win two stages of the tour. And was he a happy man? Yeah, that's the second stage win, and no one's won two stages yet. We've still got a stage to go, so I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. But, you know, in a race like the Ross Squires, it's, it's getting to be as big as the Golden West Tour, which is 
in Queensland, and uh, there's a lot more prestige for a stage win, you know. I came second on this stage last year, yeah. and uh, so but I went one worse this time, so unfortunately. But it's a long stage. It was a long stage last year as well. But yeah, there was a few boys foxing this morning stage. We sort of let a group go away. That no one was a threat, a threat on GC. We brought them back towards the end, so they didn't get much time gap. But um, yeah, it's all going to happen today out in the road. There's no need to ride negative. I wouldn't mind another stage win myself. So, and the, the climb's going to suit me coming into Cajun up this afternoon. So, give it a go. Matthew Pointer's time for stage seven was one hour, 21 minutes and 47 seconds. But his general classification time of almost 16 minutes gave him little chance of winning the tour. In the general classification, Henk Vogels held a lead of one minute 14 over Matthew White with Gavin Parsonage third. The WA amateur, it was time to pull on the yellow again. A steady ride over the final stage and the $3,000 prize was his. The eighth and final stage took the riders 113 kilometres from Cranbrook back to Kojanup where the tour had started. They began with 10 laps of the town. Vogels and Chris Brown made a break and soon led by half a lap. But 10 turned into 11 for the leaders and they failed to turn onto the main road. The pack was on its way to Kojanup without them and the two West Australians weren't happy about the extra work they had to do to catch up. No rider was applying pressure until Chris Anning broke clear after 10 kilometres. The WA rider was still in front as he took the first sprint money approaching Tambala. But front running proved tough on his own and Anning was swallowed up by the rest of the field with just over 50 kilometres behind them and 60 more to go. Broome Hill left 70 kilometres to go with crosswinds and, as expected, riders started to make their moves. Steve Lack was first in company with Kevin Behan. Five kilometres later, the leaders had been caught and the pace slowed as the riders battled into a headwind. Henk Vogel sat at the front and let the field know he was the one to beat. Gavin Parson each broke up a hill but couldn't leave the pack behind and he soon made way for Darren Gowdy. With 30 kilometres left in the tour, White went to the lead and then took the intermediate sprint, making certain he'd take home the sprinter's jersey. White had a good lead and a strong finish would see him clinch second place. 25, there you go. Got good legs, so yeah. have another go later. Vogels then applied the pressure, but within five kilometres, he'd been caught. The sprint to the finish began as the riders closed on Kojina. After over 100 kilometres, a climb up the main street found riders with tired legs and none could get a break. 
but a downhill sprint set the leaders up for a fast, tight finish. They raced to the line at 80 kilometres per hour. Dennis, Bogles, White, Sanders, Allen. And first over the line, a tired Darren Gardy. No one could break away and up the climb. It was really hard. Guys were going off the back. I'm not going off the back myself and just managed to hang in there. And the finish was a downhill finish. And we are just screaming down there. And I just had a bit more top speed. And I don't think I actually won a tour here in Perth before, <laughs> but I mean, it's great to win at home. Um, I've only won one tour overseas. To come home and win here is even better. Yeah, it was hard to catch Hank on the last stage. I had a bit of a go after that sprint. But it's it just a bit too far out, so... You made quite a valiant attempt there. I, I thought for a second that, well, you know, you might look as, you're looking strong and you had a couple of downhills there. You're looking all right. Yeah, it was a bit undulating, but um, more sort of... Oh, I had to put it about minute 30 into Hank. And there was a lot of riders back there. You could have chased, you know, 20 riders. So I thought uh, it was only just out a minute and it was too undulating. You know, if I'd been caught by the bunch and Gavin Pass, you just snapped over the top, I could have lost my second place overall. So I rode a bit, little bit more defensive, but it paid off in the end. Darren Gowdy was happy to win the final stage after his second placing for stage seven. He rode the 113 kilometres in three hours, six minutes and 46 seconds, beating Gavin Parsonage and Matthew White. But the tour belonged to Hank Vogels, who had led for the last five stages and admitted he was not confident of winning until the last five kilometres. Matthew White took a slice of the prize money back to Sydney with his overall second placing and the Sprint King Award, which he won from Chris Brown. So Hank Vogels became the second winner of the Classic and was able to look forward to the chance of more prize money in the East Coast races in weeks to come. Vogels was also part of the winning team. White and Parsonage second and third also showed their quality and the Great Southern looked forward to seeing them return in 1995.